IMAX. It says it will almost triple the number of theaters it has in China. The company also increasing the number of screens it has in Russia. Part of a plan to boost the number of screens worldwide by 25%. With us this morning is the CEO of IMAX, Rich Galfons. Good to have you in studio. Nice here. to be here, Margaret. So much buzz about 3D and perhaps as a result, a lot of frustration about 3D, perhaps not panning out the way some had hoped it would in the U.S. Fad? Oh, definitely not. 3D is not a fad. For IMAX, we've always said that um, it's always about the movie, not whether it's 3D or 2D. So mm -hmm. we didn't go crazy when 3D came in. We didn't do everything in 3D. And as a matter of fact, this weekend, we're still playing Inception, which has done very well for us. We did uh, um, a very significant number, considering it's week four. Um, it's interesting, when you talked about the top four films of all, up to right. crack 400 million, three of those were done in IMAX, by the way, and one of them was uh, The Dark Knight, which was a 2D film. So I think Hollywood's a funny place. When a tornado movie works, everyone says there's always going to be tornado movies. Then it doesn't work. I right. think people got a little carried away after the success of Avatar, and they thought it was easy. You just turn it into 3D, and you make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I think what everybody's discovering, it's about the movie. So if it's the right movie, I think it will, uh, 3D will last. But if it's the wrong movie, 3D doesn't turn a bad movie into a good movie. So how do you select the right movie? Um, you look at a lot of elements. You look at who the director is and some of the best directors uh, in the world have mm -hmm. chosen to work in IMAX. People like Spielberg, Cameron, Chris Nolan, um, Sam Raimi. You look at the, whether it's a franchise property. So obviously Toy Story was a sequel to pre-existing movies. You look at the marketing campaign behind it. So I'll give you an example. There's a film coming out this December with Disney called New Tron, one, which has a huge marketing budget New behind one, it, and it's in 3D. It's a remake. And that's a film we're doing. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a remake. And Avatar, I mean, Avatar wasn't Avatar until it came out and was promoted and seen the way it was. But we chose it because it was Jim Cameron. It was a big budget film. It had a big marketing campaign. So we spent a lot of time on that. And you know, the record speaks for itself. We've had 19 films in IMAX that came out number one at the box office in a row. Well, there was a lot of concern uh, as to the premium that was being charged in a down economy. We know box office overall is what, down 5% from where it was last year. And some theaters here in New York were charging $20 a ticket for IMAX films. And then that sort of quickly disappeared. How much do you weigh on in, in on that pricing? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of say on that. It's the exhibitors that, that charge the prices. I think you meet more price resistance for the family films like right. Toy Story and Shrek because the average person buys 3.3 tickets for a family film, where if it's a fanboy film, it's 1.6 tickets for family. So there's much more elasticity at that level. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of the increases came just when some of the family films were being released. So you've got to be wanting to push back on that, particularly with a Toy Story or a film like that, where you want a, a bigger, younger audience to be attending. Well, I think when we choose films, we just have to be cognizant of how long is it playing? Is it a fanboy film? It is, is it a family film? And choose the right movies for the right length of time. Now, we introed this by talking about your international expansion. You're making a big push into China and to Russia. Specifically in China, that film Aftershock is getting a lot of attention, um, a good portion of the revenue coming from cinemas in which they're shown on the IMAX screen. This is a sensitive issue about uh, earthquakes and devastation in China, an emotional one. Why was this the right film? Um to work well on. For much the same reasons that you asked me how we choose films in the United States. So Aftershock was a big budget film for China. Uh, the studio Y.E. Brothers is known for its marketing prowess. The director, Feng Xiaogong, had done some of the biggest grossing movies in China previously. Some of the visual effects lent themselves to the IMAX format. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, China was the first market we tried doing an IMAX film outside of North America. And you're right, it's been very successful for us. I, quickly, I have to ask you, and I, that's such a serious film, Hong Kong and 3D porn. There have been a lot of anticipation of this. The first IMAX uh, 3D movie, May 2011. How much potential is there in this market? Um, unfortunately, that was a false report. I don't really. It was. Yeah. Reuters had that out, saying yeah. that, in fact, you're in production there. I, I believe they're putting a correction out. See, one of the things is IMAX has become so popular on a worldwide basis, and saying okay. you're releasing it in IMAX creates a buzz, so you get a lot of these false reports. All right, thank you very much for running us around the world there. I appreciate it.